Will Starlink ever have a competitor? Why, yes. Amazon is trying their hand with their Project Kuiper, and now they're finally getting off the ground. In fact, Monday, April 28th, United Launch Alliance, or ULA, successfully launched Amazon's first operational satellites. So I knew about Project Kuiper when I first started covering Starlink in the Better Than Nothing beta days, and I am surprised that it's taken them this long to make progress. We're already in the spring, almost summer of 2025, but apparently they're finally getting things going. And they're using the United Launch Alliance Atlas V rocket to carry those satellites. Now, this is the Kuiper 1 mission. This launch marks the beginning of full-scale deployment of the Kuiper Constellation and a new chapter in the commercial launch industry as Amazon partners with ULA to deliver a majority of its advanced satellites in low Earth orbit. And so while SpaceX just celebrated the 250th dedicated Starlink satellite launch, Amazon has its own plans. In addition to the successful launch of two Kuipersat prototypes in 2023 and another seven launches aboard Atlas V, Project Kuiper will leverage the next generation Vulcan rocket for 38 high cadence rapid fire launches, positioning ULA to deliver more than half of the constellations, more than 3,200 satellites through the world's largest commercial launch agreement. I think it's really crazy that the Project Kuiper prototype satellites were launched all the way back in October of 2023. Now that they're finally launching their satellites for real, how long will it take for customers to be able to use the service? And also, how many customers are going to adopt Project Kuiper satellites over, let's say, Starlink? I mean, it's crazy. Starlink is already in Best Buy and, you know, all sorts of stores all over the globe. And so I'm not exactly sure, although a lot of people are already in the Amazon ecosystem. So I could see some people just wanting to keep everything Amazon and maybe they'll switch. However, it'll also just probably come down to price. And so, yes, in this first launch, 27 satellites were launched from Florida this is the start of Amazon's $10 billion mission to deliver global broadband and to, you know, compete with SpaceX's Starlink. And so again, I think it'll come down to price, but unfortunately, Amazon has not publicly disclosed specific pricing details for its consumer satellite internet service. So making direct comparisons with SpaceX's Starlink would only be speculative, but we can try with the help of Grok. So currently, here's some of the Starlink pricing. The monthly service cost for Starlink's residential plan is priced at approximately $80 to $120 per month in the U.S. The mobile roam plan starts at $150 per month. And the upfront cost for a Starlink dish and hardware is $349, which has been reduced. It used to be $600, and this is to make it more accessible. Of course, this is for the standard residential kit. Starlink also offers unlimited data with no hard caps, though speeds may vary. Let's talk about Project Kuiper, what's being projected. Amazon has emphasized affordability as a core goal for Project Kuiper, aiming to bridge the digital divide by offering low-cost broadband to underserved communities. So apparently Amazon has developed compact, low-cost consumer terminals or antennas with a reported production cost below $500, which is significantly cheaper than Starlink's antennas, which cost SpaceX around $2,500 to produce at one point. Amazon's smallest antenna, a portable model, is projected to retail for around $100 with speeds up to 100 megabits per second. The standard residential antenna supporting up to 400 megabits per second may cost around $400 and a larger enterprise model could handle about 1,000 megabits per second. Amazon's expertise in consumer electronics like Kindle and Echo and a custom chip design could further reduce costs through economies of scale potentially allowing Kuiper to offer hardware at a lower price point than Starlink. Given Amazon's focus on affordability and competition with Starlink's $80 to $120 monthly residential plan, Kuiper is expected to be competitive, possibly even in the range of $50 to $100 per month for residential service. 
So while Starlink's over 8,000 satellites and over 5 million customers give it a massive lead, Amazon's true trillion dollar market cap and AWS infrastructure allow it to absorb initial losses and integrate Kuiper with cloud services, potentially offering value added features like enterprise SLAs, prime bundles that could justify competitive pricing. So I guess we'll have to wait and see on the official pricing, but at least they got the ball rolling. And also this is great for ULA. However, things are not as great for Firefly, at least with their most recent mission happening Tuesday, April 29th. This was a dedicated commercial launch for their customer Lockheed Martin, and the mission name was Message in a Booster. Unfortunately, following a nominal liftoff of Firefly's Alpha rocket, there was a mishap during first stage separation for the FLTA-6 mission that impacted the Stage 2 Lightning Engine nozzle. Firefly says they're working with their Lockheed Martin customer, the Space Force, and the FAA to conduct a thorough investigation and determine the root cause. Initial indications showed Alpha's upper stage reached 320 kilometers in altitude. However, upon further assessment, the team learned the upper stage did not reach orbital velocity and the stage and payload have now safely impacted the Pacific Ocean in a cleared zone north of Antarctica. They're still working to conduct an investigation and determine the root cause of the anomaly. But, you know, this is a bummer for Firefly. As one user pointed out, Firefly Aerospace became the first U.S. company to land on the moon since the Apollo missions, yet has four failures out of six launches with their small satellite rocket. Which, if we go back in time a little bit, in September of 2021, this was the first test launch of the Alpha rocket, which unfortunately failed to reach orbit due to an engine failure caused by a fuel valve electrical connector shearing approximately 15 seconds after liftoff. The rocket lost control at transonic speeds about 2.5 minutes into the flight, and the flight termination system was activated, resulting in the loss of the vehicle and its payloads. In October of 2022, Firefly's second launch was a partial success as the Alpha rocket reached orbit and deployed seven satellites. However, the satellites were placed in a lower than intended elliptical orbit due to an issue with the second stage, causing most to re-enter Earth's atmosphere within days. Firefly claimed the launch met their objectives, but the incorrect orbit is often considered a partial failure. In December of 2023, the Fly the Lightning, or fourth mission, the Alpha rocket successfully reached low Earth orbit but failed to achieve the precise target orbit due to a software error in the guidance navigation and control system. This prevented the second stage from completing its circularization burn. Wow, that's a hard word. The payload, a Lockheed Martin Technology demonstration satellite, was deployed in an elliptical orbit with a low perigee of 215 kilometers, leading to its re-entry on February 10th, 2024. This is also considered a partial failure. Failure. And of course, additionally, the message in a booster or sixth mission launch experienced a mishap during that first stage separation, where this first stage impacted the second stage's lightning engine nozzle, resulting in a lower than planned orbit. And we can't forget the third mission, which successfully launched on September 14th, 2023. This was part of the Victus Knox mission, a responsive space demonstration for the U.S. Space Force. This mission involved a quick launch of a satellite in response to a potential national security threat, demonstrating the U.S. capability for rapid space deployment. And of course, the Blue Ghost mission successfully stuck the landing on the moon. So I just wanted to give this update mainly because the launch just happened today. And unfortunately, yes, there was a bit of an issue, but, you know, space is hard and Things aren't only hard for uh, SpaceX and getting a Starship to be where it needs to be. There are obviously other companies who are getting more involved um, in the space race, and there's a lot of trial and error. So as Jonathan McDowell wrote, condolences to Firefly Space. Despite losing the second stage nozzle, the vehicle got really close to orbit. A few seconds more, obviously another failure is very bad for them, but the almost survival does suggest the vehicle is robust overall. 
So that's some space news for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. It's free and it helps me out a lot. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.